Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this beautiful scene. It's a mountain misty forest kind of scene uh, by photographer Lori Lohi. So thanks to him for providing this photo for us today. Really looking forward to painting it for you. Got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight for our live show. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so this is the photograph here we'll be using. Um, I wanted to, um, I'll, I'll use this here when we draw it out, reference it, but we're going to be using a nine by 12 inch canvas today. Um, really any kind of uh, portrait form canvas would work for this, any size, um, however you wanted to crop it. And I've also got a, um, a few different brushes. So you're gonna want like a large flat or a large filbert for um, the background area here to blend it and then um, for the trees you're going to need some sort of fan brush or stippler or um, blender of some sort so I've got various different sizes I'll mention them as I use them and I've also got some angle brushes because I like to use those for some grasses and, and leaves and things too and then you're going to need a um, some sort of a thin liner brush for some of these thin um, branches and such so thank you to Princeton our brush sponsor and to Fredericks our canvas sponsor for so sure adding those tonight um, okay, let me go over our colors really quick you can see how much brighter <laughs> the reference photo is to this one so mm -hmm. we're really not gonna be able to use it for exact color matching but at least we'll be able to use it for drawing We've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, uh, yellow oxide. This is the transparent version, but the regular version is fine too. Um, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, thalo turquoise. You could also substitute thalo blue uh, green shade or something or any of the thalo greens. Um, the thalo turquoise is kind of spans a gap between a thalo green and thalo blue. That's what it is mixed together. Um, also ultramarine blue and um, what is that? Quinacridone magenta and unbleached titanium. Titanium white, zinc white, and this is my gloss glazing liquid that I like to use. Zinc white is just for because we've got some fog and things, so the zinc white is transparent. It helps when we do those kind of effects. I'm going to move the camera just a little bit away from the edge because I'm leaning forward into it there. Okay. Um, all right, let's get going here on the drawing. So, uh, what you're gonna, what the first thing um, you're going to notice is the sky is this V shape, and it comes down to about the third here. So, if you split your canvas, your um, image in three parts this way, this um, rock right here kind of hits right at the third right here, and then these mountains or these these trees right here are just below the third this way so we can start there with our drawing and just kind of mark that so find our thirds here and just kind of right underneath there is our going to be our our forest kind of trees right there i'm doing it very lightly because i don't really need it to be right real dark at this point and so right in there and then we're going to have this v shape happen so this is going to come up this way right on this third we're going to have these trees right here hit and they're going to go just above this um, third mark. So they're going to be like right in here somewhere. We can just kind of mark them just vaguely. We don't really have to draw them in right now. And I'm not going to really draw in any of this, um, but I am going to just mark kind of where this dark part starts, which is kind of right in here. They, it goes from this misty area to this darker area. So right down in here is where I want to transition to my darker and it's going to go all the way over to this area and then it's going to go up to right about in here somewhere. And then this is all going to be a dark tree too, but we're seeing the sky through the trees. So anytime you're seeing those sky through the trees, I don't I don't paint the trees in or paint around them. I paint the sky and then I paint the trees on top. Then uh, there's gonna be a large rock in here. Um, it's actually gonna be just above the third on this way. So it's actually probably a little bit bigger right here. And then there's another one that's kind of right in here. And then one that cuts off this part here and then some really cool ferns and things. I might make this fern a little bit bigger in the 
foreground. I think this is called Fairy Morning is what he named this photo, and it's yeah. definitely apt. It looks like a fairy morning, doesn't it? <laughs> I love it. Um, so, all right, let's get going here. I'm really excited about painting this one, and I want to give it plenty of time. <clears throat> so let's start with the large brush, large flat. Here I'm going to use a 12 flat in the Princeton Summit series. And I'm going to do this large area of yellow in the middle here. And then as the yellow is wet, I'm going to paint it quickly. And as it's wet, I'm going to try to add in just a little bit of these trees that are in here. So I think what I'm going to do is grab a palette knife and mix up the color that I'll need for the trees so that once I get that um, yellow part on there, I can just grab the tree color and put it on also while the yellow is still wet. So for the yellow, we're going to use a little bit of my cadmium yellow um, light and a little bit of like a tiny, tiny bit of the... Um, yeah, I'm already having trouble. <laughs> um, <laughs> Indian yellow hue. All right, this happens when I start getting into art. Here, I lose the ability to actually talk, so form sentences. <laughs> uh, words are hard. <laughs> it's uh, one of my favorite contemporary artists, Lisa Lacry. Um, Lisa Clo, Clo, she says words are hard. That's her saying. It's like I can relate to that. Yes. Okay. So here we go. We're mixing, and that's about what we're gonna use for most of that yellow area. I might make it a little bit more yellow. Um, the Indian yellow hue just takes it from being like a really bright yellow to a little bit more muted. Um, color. You can even add a little bit of the yellow oxide in there if you wanted it even more muted. Um, it's just up to you. But I think that's pretty, yeah, pretty close to what I want. All right, so I'm just going to mix that up really well. Hopefully that'll be enough. So I put a big glob of white there. So it was like 10 parts white to like maybe half part or <laughs> you know yellow is is very very little yellow in here so it's mostly white because that yellow is really going to tint this very strongly you can always add more but um i'm just going to wipe that off of my with my brush so i don't waste any of that hold on to it wipe that off really quick and then i'm going to grab more white and my i really don't like this Mixing, it's not doing a very good job for me. Here, I'll try this one. Um, all right, so the trees are kind of slightly reddish, so I'm going to get just a little bit of the quinacridone burnt orange. Look how bright that is. And some of the Indian yellow hue. And mix those two together. It's going to make a nice orange for me. And then I'm probably going to want to mute it a little bit with just a slight bit of um, burnt umber. So I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt umber. And when I say a little, I'm talking like that much. Not, not, you know, not a lot. So we're pretty much equal parts burnt sienna, or I'm sorry, burnt umber and quinacridone burnt orange. You could use burnt sienna instead if you didn't have it. Um, the quinacridone burnt orange has a little bit more of a reddish tone than the burnt sienna does so it's more pink actually so you could add a little magenta or something some red into it let me see that's probably not dark enough not quite and i don't think it's brown enough either so i'm not going to add i'm going to add just a tiny touch of black i don't really tend to use black for mixing a whole lot but in this case i think we're going to want it because we're going to use it in our trees and so it would make sense that it would be in kind of in this background trees since it's going to be in our foreground trees as well. Okay, that'll be closer to what we want. Okay, so when it comes time to use it, what I'll do is I will um, mix this yellow with it as well in places, but I'll have this kind of set aside to grab. It's just kind of a gray brown. It's really, really muted, not too dark. really kind of just a middle 
middle value. If we looked at our value scale, we're kind of right in here in the five range ish, and that's about right on our photograph. All right, so I'm going to get a little bit more water, grab some more of this yellow that I've got here. And I'm going to grab some white because right up in here is the brightest area. So I'm going to start there with the white and pull down and just fill this whole area in. I really shouldn't have put that dark green in there. I'm going to scrub it out because I don't want it to affect what is going on here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of stay away from this area because this is blue up here. I don't want my yellow in that area so I'm gonna get my white and I'm going fairly thick with my paint because I don't want it to dry too quickly so I'm using the heavy body acrylics which will also give me a little bit extra drying time I'm just gonna lay that on there fairly thick right through there and then right at the top I'm gonna kind of go around my white area and just start kind of trying to create that halo effect that I'm seeing. So put a, a decent amount of white on there first, right in that middle area there. And now I'm just kind of brushing through it. Okay, so that's gonna be good. I'm gonna get a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange and my yellow, Indian yellow hue. And I just got it on the corner of my brush and I'm gonna go around my white with that keeping that dark area towards the outside. So I have white in the middle here and it's really, okay, something like that. And I'm just gonna kind of brush through it. Now it's kind of on there. I'm just gonna brush through it quickly. Okay, I'm gonna leave that because I need to work on this area while this is still wet. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of that yellow on there so that it's still wet. You get just a little bit of water. You don't want too much water at this point because you've got heavy, you've got this thick paint on here. And if you put too much water in it, um, it would lift off the canvas. So I need to remember where my trees are. They're right in here somewhere. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna hold my brush upright and I'm just going to tap through. And if I keep the yellow kind of on the bottom end of my brush like this and and use the corner to pick up that darker color. Then I have the both colors there on at once, then it kind of automatically will disappear that bottom edge of the trees. So just gonna press my brush flat a little bit more so that I get kind of a straighter tip on some of these trees. And some of them back here are lighter, so I'm gonna get some of the Need more yellow. Do some of those. I'm kind of having trouble getting it straight. Okay, there we go. You can switch brushes if you need to as well. So this one is kind of almost not working quite as well as I'd hoped. It's splitting on me a little bit. Okay, then once I get that first kind of layer of trees down, then I'm going to get a little bit of this darker color and go back over it again with some of the darker color and just tap in up and down in here. Kind of creating these pine tree shapes. You're, they're really far away and they're super muted and so you're not really seeing the individual branches from these ones. They're too far away. You're only just kind of vaguely seeing these kind of pointed shapes coming out of the mist here. Okay. So how do you know that they are trees? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're, I don't know. See? What else would they be? Well, I don't know, but I think it's a little presumptuous of you. I mean, it could be... don't know. I'm going to get this brush here real quick. I'm sorry I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> That's okay, because I need time to think of something really... Funny. Really funny. Say. And okay. it, uh, I've got nothing, so... Okay. It's, it's probably trees. <laughs> All right, getting more of this yellow down here, and I'm just tapping off the bottom of these to create that kind of fuzz. And anywhere where it looks too dark, you can kind of just go over it with this 
lighter color. I'm going to add just a little bit of this Indian yellow hue to this yellow, just so I have a little bit brighter color here. And just use a little bit of that as well. A little bit different color. Okay. That's good. So that's all I need right there, pretty much. And then to this tree here, to, the, to that, I'm going to start with a little bit of burnt umber and just pull up with that. This is starting to get a little bit dry up in here. So just have to kind of put that down. I need it to be kind of mid to dark, not quite all the way dark. It's kind of goes pretty dark right at the bottom, but just kind of fading out. That looks good. Getting a little bit more of the yellow. And while this is wet, I'm just going to kind of tap over it. If you need to, you can let this first layer dry completely and then do this bottom area. That's totally fine. It'll still work. You just have to add a little bit more of the yellow in this area right here before you put that brown in. So just depends on kind of what yours is doing. It's it's wanting to dry pretty quickly, so it might it might be that you have to give it a couple, give it a minute to dry and take a hair dryer to it or something to speed it up. But Got a question? Mm -hmm. Somebody would like to know what could they use if they do not have Indian yellow hue? Um, just any kind of dark, uh, like bright. Um, you could add orange to your cadmium yellow. You could add cadmium orange um, or a or like a yellow, uh, like a, oh, there's cadmium yellow deep. And there's, you know, there's various uh, yellows that are a little bit darker. And that's, that's what you want, or a little bit, just slightly orange tint to it. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't have to be that. I should have mentioned that before I started here. But, yeah, um, that's another one that, you know, you can really easily switch out with something else. Okay, so that's good, I think. Just basically want it kind of very, like, misty and soft. I think that this is not quite orange enough, but what I can do is, like, tint it later so I'm just gonna let that dry and this is dry enough now that I can do a second layer on it I'm not gonna be able to touch the Sun I can tell that that's still a little bit wet I'm gonna actually try up in here I'm gonna ooh that was still darn it <laughs> that had that brown in it I know oh, I'm just gonna wipe that off okay try that again here we go make sure this is clean forgot I had that brown in it. <laughs> yeah, get that white. <laughs> and yeah, I put the yellow, the white a little bit too low there. So there we go. So right up in there, the white. And let's go ahead and grab the yellow that's just around it. This is the second layer on here, so it's going to be a little bit thicker and cover a little bit better and then I want that halo to be a little closer to it so I'm going to go in with a little bit of that Indian yellow hue with that yellow and come a little bit closer to that white area this time I'm using this brush because it's going to give me a little bit more of a fuzzy edge and a little bit more control okay so I can kind of wisp it out here to get that paint down being using very little paint that's the key with these kind of brushes when you're doing these kind of softer dry brush type effects you need to use very little paint now does it matter what size brush you hold in the opposite hand while you do this <laughs> almost looks like a person coming out the it does God. like i said are you short trees <laughs> some more of that white and, and you're using a deer foot stippler deer foot stippler yep and I'm just using that more of a yellow down here now that I've got that white in the right spot I had it too low before so there we go all right then I need to start adding a little bit of the pink tones so I'm going to get just a tiny touch of my magenta and add that with 
and get a little bit of water on here. Generally, I don't like to have too much water on this brush because they can got, get kind of soggy um, and flop around on me. So I just need to be careful, but I did need a little bit of water in my paint. It was getting a little sticky. So there we go. So a nice, like, pretty orange salmon pink color taking most of it out so that's my brush is going to look like it's dry but it's not it's got a little bit of that pink tone in it that's all I need is just a tiny touch of it to get that little buff of color to go on the canvas and I might need to let that first layer dry a little bit more but I'm going to go ahead and use it down here this is dry now I'm going to go ahead and use it down here. Like I said, I can kind of glaze or I can use this. In fact, I'm going to use a little bit of glaze and that'll help it go on a little bit more transparent like transparent. See how pretty that is? Just adding a tint to color. That's all glazing is just adding a tint over the top of another color so that it changes the hue just a little bit without changing the look of the Piece. so we can see still see through it it's a transparent layer so you can uh, you you do it very thinly so that you can still see through to the other layers and I've added a little bit of this yellow with the glaze as well and used that to kind of soften up this whole in between area there where it's all misty I'm gonna get a little bit of my pink and add it to my yellow here and use that as well look how pretty that is Okay, so we've got it up here, we've got it down here. It's all kind of usually whatever's going on in your sky is what's going to happen down in either your reflected water or your, um, in this case, the atmosphere, you know, picking up the colors of the sky and transferring it to all the trees and things around. All right, so I'm going to use some of this around the sides here. Just a little bit really don't have any color yet over here so I'm just sort of starting to tint it and I just need to be concerned with my transitions between these colors that's all so I need to be sure that I'm using thin layers so that I'm not getting any hard lines and if you're getting hard lines what you can do is go back in figure out what your most prominent color is in this case it's this yellow and then just go back over the line that you're seeing and soften it up and just buff it out a little bit and that this color is really opaque it's got lots of white in it so it's going to cover up anything that we don't want too obvious still not using a lot of it though I'm not trying to cover up it to completely I'm just trying to kind of soften the transitions make sure I don't have any hard line hard harsh lines okay so now I've got this area up here that I need to add my blue and so I'm gonna have to be really careful where I put it because I don't want it to turn my sky green um, so I'm going to get a little bit of the quinacridone I'm sorry the burnt ultramane blue that's the word I'm looking for it's not burnt ultramane no blue. it's just... burnt it's ultramane blue ultramarine and a, just a tiny touch of the burnt orange and that's going to turn it purple you could also use magenta either one really either one of those quinacridones will work just a tiniest touch of it though we don't want a lot and um, just to tone it down just slightly I'm going to add just a touch and again very 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 light touch of burnt umber and that will make it there we go that'll make it more gray so I'm going to add it right there and add it right there. Try to get most of the color off my brush in the darkest area where I want it the darkest. Wipe my brush off. And then use what's left on my canvas here to quickly feather out that edge. It's probably not going to look all that great at first. So just go with it. It's fine. We'll probably have to do this a couple of times before it looks right. So just know that going in. Okay. Acrylics is all about layering. You just have to be real patient with it because right now it looks like a hot mess and it's supposed to look like this. So when yours looks like this, don't panic. <laughs> You're doing it right. It's totally fine. But that would going to be mine finished. We'll get you there. That'll be yours finished. <laughs> yes, that's my finished version that's right there. That's your finished version. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit thicker with my paint because I kind of had it a little bit soupy there and I didn't like I don't like how that 
is looking. So I'm going to go a little bit darker. And I really do need to have it more saturated. So I'm going to use a little bit less white and get a little bit darker version of it over here. Because I need it to be really dark in this corner. Not really dark, but it's got to be fairly dark. That's what's kind of drawing the eye into it. Kind of creates this little vignette um, of this dark corner and this light in the middle pulls the eye in. Okay, that looks pretty good, believe it or not. And now I'm going to go back to this brush, wipe most of that yellow out of it. And I'm going to grab this blue. I'm just going to work it on this edge here. And you can wait for it to dry if you need to. Um, mine's still wet enough that I can still work this edge, so it's it's doing okay. If it starts to kind of feel sticky or it's like lifting and doing weird things, then you just have to let it dry completely and then do this. So just kind of have to let the paint tell you what it wants you to do. Listen to it. Because if you don't, it will mess you up. If it's wanting to dry and it is getting sticky and not want to be pushed around or not moved around on the canvas and it's just not cooperating, then you just need to leave it, let it dry, and then come back to it and do another layer. I think a lot of people get tripped up when they just try to manipulate um, acrylics like they do oils and try to blend it when it's starting to dry. And if you do that, you're going to be in a world of hurt because they do not like to be messed with while they're drying. They're very, it's kind of like me in the morning, see? It's just like, <laughs> don't mess with me. <laughs> Leave me alone. Let me get some tea. <sighs> I gotta wake up slowly, so. They need to be rest, let them rest. <laughs> let them dry out. Not, not that I have that problem, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the other morning huh? when you came out of the bedroom and I was like, did I wake you up? She's like, yes. I could have used another hour of sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> but hey, we have a success to talk about for Angela. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. What? She you made some white here. She made an incredible homemade spaghetti I sauce. Did. I'm so proud of myself. So she has more than redeemed herself for her uh, quesadillas. <laughs> Salsa. Oh yeah. I made sun dried tomatoes. Mm hmm. And out of the cherry tomatoes, and then I made salsa. I wish I hadn't given away so many of my tomatoes <laughs> this week. Now, <laughs> I gave away five bags of tomatoes, and then I real I found the recipe for the for the, for the tomato sauce, and I'm like, ah, oh, shoot! I could have made tomato sauce and fr froze it, but my friends were happy, so. Yeah. It's fine. It's not the end of season yet, so we'll have a few more opportunities to. And no, there were, there were no kitchen fires, so that's good. exactly no <clears throat> kitchen no fires. No smoke alarms. Nope, we're we're good. That's what we had for dinner just before the show. Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Pretty proud of myself. It's the first time I've done that. Very, it was very, very easy. <laughs> it was shockingly easy. I'm like, why have I not done this before? Okay, so um, that looks pretty good. It's still a little bit rough, so probably going to want to soften some of these edges, but I just need, I need to let it dry really well, so I'm going to work on the yellow here, get a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of glaze, and just kind of softly go over this edge right here just a little bit. This area is dry because it's very thin. pretty happy with that. This is dry enough that I can go over this, so I'm going to go over this with the yellow. Okay. And I'm going to let that set. So let's work on this area here. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my yellow. I kind of tapped off all when I glazed. I kind of lo lost that light area that's through the middle here. So I'm going to tap in some of that 
fuzz haze that's right here at the bottom of these coming across get a little bit more of it on here and you do it right here this one's a little bit lower they kind of meet in the middle a little bit okay there we go that looks good that looks all right I'm 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 not hating that so I'm gonna leave that <clears throat> let me get my brown my burnt umber and some of this color from here this middle color here I'm gonna use it up here so right where am I at right here on the third going up to just about right here is going to be the tree right here so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just gonna mark it really quickly um, Although I actually need to probably wait because I'm probably going to need to do some more of the yellow right there behind it. So, but if I know where that is, then I know kind of where generally where this bush is going to be. And it's going to be right behind that big green tree that's right in here. It's just like a dark area that starts right in here and it angles down and kind of meets up with this dark area here. Okay, so kind of like that. And I'm just kind of using this brush to fuzz out the edges a little bit, or you can just tap and stipple so that it looks like kind of like a, you know, bushes or something. And then in this corner, I want to go really dark. So I'm going to actually get the black and do this area really dark back here. And kind of go up to, but not over the top of that edge. Kind of just blend it in a little bit right there so I always start by putting the, the color that you want most saturated darkest in that area first so you put that down and then use what's left in my brush here to blend it out and it it will blend out for you and you'll end up with enough still left in your brush to kind of push and blend into other areas here so i'm going to get a little bit more of my burnt umber and i'm going to use it down here and just fuzzing out the edges so put it down where i want it darkest and then kind of using my brush to just sort of push it and fluff it out into the other areas where i want it to blend into Okay, so this color, this darker color, get a little bit of the blue, I'm seeing kind of a little bit of a bluish tint down here, all the way across here. And then down here, it's just really dark black. So I'm just gonna do this whole area kind of black down, down here because it there is a lot of contrast in the foreground. You're going to have the most contrast generally in your foreground where you're able to see the lights and darks. Back in here, you're going to have less contrast. Your values are going to be closer to each other, more desaturated. And down here, we're going to have the brightest, most vivid colors and the most contrast between our light and dark areas most value change shift most dramatic value changes and by values i just mean light and dark that's it that's all that means so i'm going black and see how how if you look in our photograph that's that's what we're seeing we're seeing black in these foreground areas it's really dark i'm going to get a little bit of the blue and burnt umber just to have a little bit of different tone in this rock here just a slight bit of blue to it not just the black and then I'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this all the way down to the bottom. And don't worry, we're going to go over it with our light color. And it's going to be really dramatic once we do because we're going to have this really dark color in our shadows. And so it's going to really make our light colors pop. Okay, and then like right in here, I'm seeing a little bit of that blue from the sky. So I'm just going to get a little bit more of that color. Wipe that out completely. Get my ultramarine blue and a little bit of the burnt orange and my white and more of the white down here, okay? 
And I'm just going to use it all along there. It's pretty, that's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow and my white here. I'm just going to go over it in the opposite direction. It's going to turn it kind of green, but that's okay. I don't mind it over here. I just didn't want it green up on my sun. good and then it's also going to come down to here and kind of go in front of this just a little bit okay let's go ahead and back to this bigger brush here actually I think I'm going to get my filbert since it's got a rounded edge it'll make the blending a little bit easier. I'm going to use this darker color up here again. Just use up what's left in my palette up here. Darken that up. And then just use that the thinned out paint to kind of glaze over this area here. one. I think I like this one better. It was kind of doing a little bit better job of that softer blending for me. So we get a little bit of that ultramarine blue and white. Wipe out most of it. It still has a little bit of that yellow in there, but I don't mind it because it's going to be this area where it's kind of meeting up with the yellow. And I just need to work on this transition so that it's not as obvious. I want a smoother blend between there. I mean, really you could leave it like this if you wanted to. It does have that kind of foggy, misty feeling to me, but I think I want it a little bit smoother. So I'm going to get my yellow again. And I'm going to lay down another layer of yellow right up to the blue. So I'm going to get my yellow and go in this area right here. And just smooth it on. And I can use the glaze to make it transparent. And the transparency will add a smoothness to our blend. Now that we've got colors down, what we're doing is we're just kind of taking off the edge of the border between the two colors. See how that softens it up. This is transparent yellow. I'm not using the pink right now, but I probably need to add a little bit back in. But that's much better. Okay, so I'm going to grab my white. I'm going to do it in the middle, and at this point you may have to, you know, do a pretty good amount of white, depending on how much, you know, you have left in the center right there. Wipe my brush out. And then instead of going into the middle, I'm just gonna go right around the outside of that white area and make sure that I don't have blue in my brush at this point or anything that's gonna affect that. I like that. I'm gonna get a little bit of the magenta in my orange or cadmium yellow. Uh, I'm sorry, Indian yellow and magenta. And this, I am very, 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 very lightly just basically dusting it, just like you would blush her on your face if you were a girl. Well, I mean, it could be either way. True. True that, yeah. I may or may not have had blush before. <laughs> Heavy, that was my problem. What? I 
probably went a little heavy with it. That was probably my problem. <laughs> she doesn't know what to say. I'm not even going <laughs> to acknowledge that. It's not. So we're only 40 minutes into it, so I'd like to say hi to everybody. Welcome. Yeah. Hey, guys. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing great out there. It's just another steamy hot Tuesday here in Arkansas. Yeah. Someday summer will kind of go away. Maybe. Hey, real quick, do you know of any uh, like higher end paintbrushes that have plastic handles? Um, the only ones I can think of are the Royal Ling Nickel Zen brushes that have plastic candles. I don't know. Okay. They're not a high end, though. But they're better than like the. But they're be yeah they're like the one dollar Walmart ones. Right. Okay. They're a decent <coughs> decent brand. Okay. I don't know if I don't think Princeton has any uh, that I know of at least. They're our brush sponsor, so I just use their stuff anymore. Mm. So I'm not real familiar with the other brands right now. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, just kind of softening up that whole area there. And I think that that's going to be good enough. I'm not going to do anything more to that, I think. I kind of think that might be a little bit low. Well, I don't know. I guess it's not. Um, it's, but I am going to use a little bit of the magenta in my orange with just the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to kind of create a little bit of of a cloud right here. You could leave this out if you don't want it, but I just see a little bit of a cloud right there. So I'm gonna do that there and maybe up here. So I do see a little bit of a softer, softer color over here. Okay, looks good. And that's actually probably a little bit darker, but So for our pine trees, and that was the Deerfoot Stippler, uh, 3 8 inch Deerfoot Stippler that I was using that whole time. And then this one was the Filbert 8. I can hear myself. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, all right. So for this far tree here, I'm going to want, whoops. I'm going to work from back to front. So the next layer of trees is going to be these big pine trees right here and I, I think I am going to make this a little bit darker up here it's kind of bugging me so I'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber and quinacridone magenta I'm sorry ultramarine blue quinacridone magenta maybe burnt orange that was just like a slightly purple purple or darker version of that blue I'm just going to use my finger, a little damp finger, to blend that out. Make sure your background's dry before you do this, though, because otherwise you'll just lift off your paint that you've got on underneath. That's good. Okay. And I can use a little bit of this color down in here, too. Why not? like along the transition between the colors, the dark color and the sky here. Okay. This is mostly going to be covered up, but we are going to see little tiny peaks of it in. So just want to make sure there's a little bit of something there. All right. So this should be light enough that when I put this darker tree in front of it, we'll be able to see it. And that tree is 
me right in here, this value here. So it's gonna be just kind of that color that we just had there, just about. So I'm gonna get a little bit of burnt umber and white water. I need a thinned out paint. So I'm gonna scrape this down so that I have a place to work here on my palette. This is just a glass palette, so I can scrape it clean as I need to. I'm gonna leave my yellow. I still have plenty of that yellow in there from the sky. I definitely wanna keep that in case I wanna use it later. So I'm gonna keep it wet through the video if possible. And then I still have a little bit of that brown from the trees too, so I'm gonna try to keep that too. All right, and then just scrape off everything else because everything else is dry. And if I try to mix colors over the dry paint, it's just gonna crumble and I'm gonna get flecks of, of paint in my, flecks of dried paint in my fresh paint. That's not good. Okay. Wipe it all down really good. All right. There we go. Okay, try that again. So, getting wider. I just grabbed some water, scooped it up, put it on my palette, and then I'm gonna add my brown. And I want a little bit of turquoise because this tree's kind of got some greenish, just slightly green. So, burnt umber. I'm gonna get the black even here. And then I want to use a little bit of this yellow from our sky, and that's going to tone it down. That's too green. So let's add a little bit of burnt, burnt um, sienna. That orangey brown color will react with the green, the turquoise, and make it more neutral. I'm going to add a little bit more of the burnt umber, a little bit more of the black. So should end up with a value that is, what did I say? Right here. So that might be a little dark. We'll see. That looks closer. All right, so it's right in here and it's kind of slants off to this side here and it goes to about the top of the third. So here's the third this way. So this tree is going to kind of come up just just above that, right in here somewhere. And it's kind of angled that way. And then there's another one right here. These branches come out to about here. This is our shape right here. Narrowing. And then right here, there's another little one right here. Okay, and that one's almost to the center, so that's about right. Now it looks good. And it's going to go right down into that dark area, so we're not going to even really see the bottom of that, but that center line will just gonna give us a, a point to work towards. So you're going to want a small fan brush. I'm going to use this one here. This is the 10 aught. If you're using a soft bristled fan brush, you're going to want to add a lot of water to your paint. A stiffer bristled fan brush, you can leave a little bit thicker paint. It'll push the paint around a little bit more than this one would. So I'm going to start at the top and just kind of tap straight up. And the first couple of layers are going to be almost straight up. So I'm just going to use the corner of the brush, kind of load it fairly thick with paint. If I can get it to scoop up on there, on that corner edge. And... across there we go and then as it kind of widens I'm going to stop and skip and then come down do another one and then and these kind of are curved almost like a smiley face
across and I'm just going to kind of start pulling down a little bit. And I don't want it too matchy matchy right now. It's looking a little bit like same, same, like same separation between the trees. So I'm going to kind of fill in some of these gaps a little bit so that it's not so artificial looking. Mm -hmm. Kind of like those low end Christmas trees. Right. <clears throat> okay, and then as we get down here, you're really seeing a big arc. And I'm just adding more of that yellow because we're seeing a lot of the yellow affecting the tree here. And then I think I'm overthinking a little bit. I think I'm just gonna go with it because I think the more the more carefully I put it on, the more artificial it looks. So I'm just gonna kind of just go dab at it, it on. Yep, dab it on more quickly here. I'll get a more random effect. And then down here at the bottom, I want to go darker. So, and this whole area is pretty much filled in, so there's not a lot of the background showing and then I'm going to go back through if you're seeing a really dark like um, stem through the middle you can go back through and kind of add a little bit of darker color to the middle area just have that lighter color around the outside edges the more yellow will kind of soften up those outside edges and make them look like they're fuzzy catching the light okay then let's get this one, same, so dab, dab top, and then very little to start with. A little bit darker than I have it here. And this one kind of sort of forms a dark curtain down here. So we get a little bit darker color. Just fill in this area between the trees. It's dark and then it should just disappear down into this area here. So this should all be dark. It's so it's so wet right here. It's not one to lay down more paint. So, okay, there we go. Okay, and then right here, where it fades out into the outer area, here I'm going to get a little bit more of my yellow and just use that right along this outside edge. Just tap it in right there where it's kind of getting light and then that dark goes right up to the edge of it though so all right that's pretty good I think good enough and again this is all dark in through here so I'm just gonna get that dark color this is actually kind of a tree here so I'm gonna go ahead and use this and tap in some of this darker color up through here. And then let's mix a little bit of this yellow with my turquoise and my Indian yellow hue. Let's use a little bit of the yellow oxide. The yellow oxide is gonna be a little bit more dull than the Indian yellow hue. Okay, so this is a bright brightish green. I'm going to use a little bit of the burnt umber to tone it down. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, either one or both. Looks good. Okay, then I want kind of a yellowish version. So I'm going to get a little bit of the K2 
cadmium yellow light and add that over here to that. And this one should be kind of a mid-tone green. It shouldn't be too bright. That's good. So you should be able to see it against this dark. So if you if you don't have it light enough or dark enough, you won't be able to see it up against this. So this is, looks good. And I'm just going to use this fan brush. It's working. So I'm just going to tap in some tree right here. It's going to go kind of about midway to this side, midway through this biggest pine tree here and to this side here. doing these lines these trees kind of grow these limbs out right they're catching the light so you're seeing kind of almost these lines happening so I'm just kind of going through here and creating these shapes with darker in between these branches coming down looks good okay and then it goes dark up in here so keep it really really dark in that corner Okay, and then below this, we're gonna have my dog trying to get in the studio here. He's making a making himself known. All right, so this one I'm gonna use this again, and hopefully that's dry enough. It's probably gonna pick up a little bit, of it, but that's okay. I'm gonna use this brightest yellow and just a little bit of this green that I just used, just a little bit. And there we go. Yep, we should be able to see it really well against that dark color there. Hi, puppers. Okay, and then as long as we have this dark enough, yep, you'll be able to see it against here too. So just adding this color right in here, creating a break between that far distant these far distant trees in the foreground this is really mid ground here but get the idea you're pushing that back creating this sense of depth right here and I'm getting a little bit of the medium-ish green here for the bottom of this so a little bit of the green that's over here down here and when you're doing it you're using just like the, the tip very tip yeah of it. this the very tip of the brush and that's that's how you can control it if I'm 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 getting the paint just along the tip there and I'm turning the brush down so that it's just basically just the tip is touching Okay, I think that's good. And it should go to a little bit past the midway mark. So here's our midway. So I've got it just about right, I think. I'm just going to kind of fluff out that outer edge by kind of adding a little bit more fluff right there. And then I'm going to have a rock right here that's going to break it up. So I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to bring it down a little bit farther than I need it. And then that, that rock will cover up a lot of this. Okay, and then I'm going to get my burnt umber and my turquoise I'm going down here with that darkest tone and just make sure I've got that darkest tone kind of in the depths of that bush right at the bottom of it. Okay, and also over here. There's a little bit. I'm going to get this kind of more yellowish green. Now that I've got that darker green on here, I'm just going to go ahead and use this brush and add just a few touches of this brighter yellow green on this brush. Just find those light areas and just go just above them with this color. Just a little bit of that brighter color. 
And then let's go ahead and do the trees on this side. Let's let this dry really well before we put in our rock or anything. Um, actually, let me go ahead and do this tree that's up here while I've got all of this out on this side. I'm gonna use that burnt umber and black. And this is really dark. This is darker than here. So going a little bit darker. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use this brush and dab in my tree that's over here. It's coming out to about right here. It's kind of filling up this space slightly and it's reaching out towards that pine tree but not quite touching it. You can use your fan brush for this too. It's either one. Well, I'm just using the brush, this brush, because I've got it in my hand, so ever one works for you. They give a little bit different look, but they're all pretty similar. Okay. And I'm not really seeing any branches on this side, so that's good. We can just kind of not worry about that and just add our tree there. And that's pretty much it on that side. Just make sure that you've got like a few areas that are a little bit thicker. And I would just practice with this brush. You know, some people find it um, challenging. So, you know, if you've got a favorite brush that works better for you, use, you know, by all means, use what, you know, what works for you. If you've got a old fuzzy brush that, you know, is kind of worked, um, that you've worked with for years and it's, it works well for foliage and stuff, use that, you know, whatever foliage brushes work for you. You can use a softer brush. You can use, that's why I don't ever throw away brushes because a lot of times your old brushes are the ones that are best for this kind of thing. They do a really good job of foliage because they're all fuzzed out and irregular can't really use them for any detailed work but you can sure use them for stuff like this okay so I'm gonna get a little bit of water and I'm gonna put out a little bit of the black in the fluid if you have it you'll probably want to use that because it'll just save us some time mixing the water into our paint that black will and I'm gonna add just a little bit of our yellow sky color and I'm hoping that it lasts it's just gonna tone it down just slightly and I've got this tree branch that's coming in through here and then coming out and filling up this space right here okay and then it kind of branches off this way and the key with branches um, I have a whole video that I did in my beginner series on how to use a liner brush. So if that's something you struggle with, I would definitely grab, you know, watch that video and use the tips in it for this. Um, basically, you need your paint thinned out. And then with tree branches, you need to have your, um, your branches thin as they go out toward the end. So... Um, you don't want to branch thicker out here than it is up in here. So I'm going to go back in through here and thicken this up just by pressing down a little bit harder on it and make sure that this whole area is thicker than any of these branches that are down in this area. And if you make a mistake or you get an area that's a little too thick or whatever, um, here's your solution right here just add a add some greenery over it and you're good to go put a bird on it <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay so using this darker color here and just adding little bits and here I'm just basically tapping lifting not doing a whole lot to it, just keeping the, pretty much keeping the foliage like a right, right on the, around the, the limbs that I've already done. There we go. Good enough. Get just a little bit down here too. 
out. And then this tree right here is a lot lighter. So it's going to be this, this lighter green here. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more of that turquoise and my two yellows, the yellow oxide and Indian yellow hue. Really, you could use the cadmium yellow either. They all kind of just have a different tone. You know, it's they're all the same. They're all greens. They're just different tones of green. So that's the main thing. You just kind of, you know, you see how many different greens we've used. We've used one, two, three, four different greens, five if you count that one with this more black, um, you know, and then these trees, which are not even green at all. So, you know, <laughs> just there's not... The main thing is just that we're kind of increasing the um, contrast as we come down closer to us. So these trees here are going to be more vibrant than these ones that were back here. They're a little bit more dull. Okay. All right. I'm um, going to do these branches here. I've got the black on the brush. And I'm just going to kind of come up from the bottom here and just wiggle in some branches coming up from these trees out. Maybe I need to do it differently. I, it'd probably be easier if I turned my turn it. turn it upside down. Let me do that. So I, while you do that, I remind everybody that down below this video is the description of all the materials that you're using, mm -hmm. and there's a link to the brush guys. Yes. Where you can order brushes and get five percent off with the code Angela Fine Art. Right. Alright, so the bad thing about doing it that way is because I don't really know where I'm ending these. <laughs> I don't want to have my drawing out in front of me so I know kind of where to stop. <laughs> so. And again, I can crisscross and do different things with these. So I'm not having to go exactly with the photograph. I just want a little bit of the branches to give me an idea of where to put these trees and then I can put branches in again later after I put my trees in so I'm um, gonna I've got my brush loaded up fairly thick with paint so I just need to kind of press it so that those top bristles flare out a little bit see how they're separating now they were kind of clumped together before I need them to be separated so that I get individual leaves otherwise I'll just get big round clumps and again, flipping my brush so that it's facing down. And I'm just gonna tap. And uh, you could use your fan brush for this. Totally work great. Hey, Will. So Will. these are very kind of thin and I might I might do that. I might try with my fan brush, see if I like that better. What? Uh, what size liner brush was that that you were using? Um, that was a number one. Thank you. Just a plain old number one liner. That's a good one liner. God. Thank you very much. You are in a weird mood tonight. <laughs> a comedian. <laughs> get you your own stage. Just go on the road. Oh, I have a captive audience here. I don't have to work <laughs> as hard for it. <laughs> Then, guys. then you just have to read the hate mail about that exactly. guy that talks all the time. Yeah. <laughs> His name is John, apparently. <laughs> get a lot of people saying that. A lot. It's not. It's Mark. <laughs> Got good comments, Mark. Bad comments. <laughs> John. <laughs> Bad comments can go too. I do like this, but it's. I find it's harder to control for some reason. I don't know. I guess it's just a new brush to me. I haven't used it much, so I'm just finding that sometimes it's doing big blobs and then sometimes it's doing smaller ones. So I'm sure the more I used it, the more comfortable I would get with it and the more easy it would be to control. But I'm kind of finding it's doing weird things. So I'm going to switch back to this one. I'm getting a little bit more of that 
red or yellow. And the the thing with trees and leaves is that they will be yellow in the sunlight. So sunlight's passing through your leaves. Um, you want to add yellow. If they're in the shadows, like down here, where they're not maybe not getting as much light, they're going to be more white, and you can add blue um, or just the white, you know, will kind of desaturate the color a little bit. And that's um, kind of just natural. Naturally what happens with leaves. I know what I'm talking about. All right. I'm going and then down here, I want to just kind of cover up where my leaves are starting. So just kind of continue or where my stems kind of come out. And then I'm gonna get more of this brighter yellow, my sky color yellow and some bright yellow. Do it right in here. And do some of these, like a little bit of white. If you just add white to this green, even if this it's this yellow green, if you add white to it, it kind of tones it down. It doesn't look as yellow. So to keep that, um, you know, when you add your white, you can add a little bit of yellow to it. And the yellow is light enough that it's going to, it won't darken it back up too much, you know. <coughs> Sorry. Fitzy, no. All right, getting some of the Indian yellow here. You can see how more orange that yellow is. It's gonna make it make this a little bit more orange down in here. It's pretty. Okay. All right. And then over here, it's a little bit darker. Actually, kind of came out a little too far with that, but oh well. <laughs> with this tree. Getting more of that, a little bit of the black, dark color, and I want to use it just up in here in my darkest areas in this tree. Coming off the edge. And just like along in here. But Is it? Oh, stickers. Yay. Sure. Okay, and I'm getting some more of that green and putting that in. Okay, there we go. Good. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got some new stickers. And the new logo. Woohoo! <laughs> That's fun. Those will be for packages when people buy something from me on Etsy. So if you want a sticker, there you go. Shameless Etsy plug. <laughs> All right, let me see here. I'm going to grab my angle brush here. This is the 3 8 inch angle, and I'm going to start putting in my rocks and things. So right on the third, right here, right in here is where this rock lives, right in the middle. It comes down here and then there's all this green, so there's just a little bit of it showing. There's all this green, really bright green right here. We did a pretty good job of stopping where we were supposed to on here. I'm pretty impressed. That hardly ever happens. <laughs> okay, and then this green kind of does sort of a V right in here, that bright green. And it continues down, down here. There's some more like lighter greens and then there's this nice fern. I'm gonna make it, bring it up just a little bit. I wanna see more of it. So I'm gonna bring it up over there. And then there's this big rock that lives here. So if this one's here, this one comes up to about where this one comes across. So right about where we stopped our bright colors, which is good lives right in here. It's got some little marks and then you're seeing a pretty obvious shape right here where the light 
ends. And this is all dark. All right. So let me get, what am I looking for? My angle brush here. I'm gonna create a nice, and just get burnt umber, yellow oxide, quinacridone burnt orange, a little bit of unbleached titanium. It's pretty. And then we're gonna add my yellow green to it. Here, making a brighter yellow green here with the turquoise and the yellow. There we go, nice bright, really vivid green. And I still had that brown in here, so I toned it down just slightly. And then I'm gonna mix these two together. So I'm gonna get my Indian yellow hue and just kinda have like a, like a, Mm, olive kind of green here mixed with this and this okay so it's fairly light right through here but I'm gonna go ahead and get my brown burnt umber and just put that rock back in with that darker color because it's it's dark all the way through here so just make sure that I've got that rock dark we need it dark. There we go. This one I'm okay because it's fairly dark. And then this one's more blue. There's a little bit of this color down in here. So make sure you have a nice little dark hollow right here where those trees end. And then we've got a little hint of this reddish green color and then I'm going to go ahead and use it I've got it on my brush I'm just going to kind of grab grab up all of these different colors actually I want to use this so I'm going to use this reddish and then this one with the Indian yellow hue so the more olive toned and I'm going to use it down here and just tap tap it in all along the bottom here this is that moss color it's really pretty There we go. And we can do this a couple times if we need it brighter. I'm gonna go ahead and go a second time through and kind of almost pull up with it as I'm lifting, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a spiky. But just make sure it's like nice and dark in our in our shadows. And I'm gonna get the tip of it and go through here and tap in a little bit of it on top of that. in there and then a little bit on top of my rock I'm gonna use a little bit of that sunlight color do it on this rock right here it's probably a little bit too bright actually Just wiping my brush off, getting a little bit of that green and just tapping back off. Toning that down a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to get the ultramarine blue. Some white. I still have a little bit of that green in there, so it's nice. It's making a nice color. I want kind of a gray blue for this rock that's over here. And I'm going to use the blender. It's a little bit stiffer bristled. It'll give me a little bit more of a texture. I'm just gonna kind of use the edge of the brush. I actually think I need it a little bit more blue so I'm going to get a little bit more of the ultramarine blue just the ultramarine blue maybe a little bit of black with it yeah the black will help kind of tone it down just a little bit and then that unbleached titanium but this is still a pretty dark color it's not super bright 
maybe two to three darker than the shadow color. Okay. I'm just going to use it and scrub at an angle down this way to create my rocks. That's about it. There's not a whole lot else showing right here. Everything else in this corner is dark. So there, and then let's use this color over here on this rock. You can even add just a tiny bit of pink to it. Okay, I'm going to get that black-brown color, go back in here and make sure I've got that dark color in some of these rock creases. Here, just kind of blend it back in. Okay, and then I want this blue with a little bit more brightness, so I'm going to use that brown that was in my brush, a little bit of this ultramarine blue that we just used. I'm going to add some brighter spots on my rock. I'm just tapping and dragging. Tap and drag, trap. Okay, I need a dark area right in here, kind of lost it. I'm just looking at the shapes that I'm seeing in that dark the negative spaces and trying to make sure that I've got these kind of in the right spot and but I the problem is see how this and this there's no contrast there they're too close to the same color so I either need to bump up the color on here or I need to darken up there's a little bit darker area in front of this that I have so I'm going to get my black and some glaze and I'm just going to glaze in this area right here in front on this bush and they'll just kind of make a separation there between those two. Now that rock's going to stand out a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to take the, this brush here with my bright greenish color. I need to keep this wet. It's going to dry before I use it. That Indian yellow hue with that brown. And I'm going to define the top edge of this rock right here with the highlight. Okay. 
we go. All right, then let's go ahead and use it a little bit on this rock too, right here. A little bit of a highlight, just right there and down. And I'm basically just kind of skipping my brush around and just creating like little random edges. Let's go ahead and go back to this brush and tap on there. Let's go ahead and give this rock a little bit more of that highlight along the top. Maybe not that bright. get that blue black there we go okay and then this is all going to be grasses here little bit of random random texture to that rock kind of on our shadow side with the blue kind of like we did over here with this just that light blue color there are some rocks down here too that are with that blue To our grasses and we're about done grass and fern all right not bad it's looking pretty good it's a fun helps when you start with a really good image like this <laughs> you know <laughs> it's a pretty amazing image so uh, there's links down in the description for the photographer, Lori Lohi. He's um, out, I think, Iceland, I want to say, or somewhere in that, in thereabouts. He's got a lot of his photos are from there, but I don't know where exactly he's located. But um, he has all these amazing photos from that area of the world. So... We were able to purchase the use of several of them for our videos here, and I was really excited to use them. We used the ladybug last um, earlier this summer, the ladybug with the forget-me-nots. That was one of his, and then we used one in my um, Patreon uh, group for one of those videos, and we'll be using another one, I think, in the fall here. So... I've got several. All right, so making a little bit more of a blue-green. And these ones are kind of a little bit more defined, so I'm just, since they're in the foreground, I'm going to kind of do the center and then kind of tap a couple of times on either side in different directions for these ones. So center and then just tap, 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 tap down the stem on either side going in opposite directions for these little leaves here. And that blue green kind of helps it look like it's in the shadow area behind this rock here. But it needs to be light enough that you can see it though, so make sure that you've got your value bright enough there. And I'm going to use the little bit of the white with my green. Give it a little bit of highlight in a couple of places, just a few little spots. 
and I'll probably do one last tap through um, to the ground in front of it and that'll kind of hide any starts of the you know stems and things and I'm gonna put my big fern right in here so I'm gonna leave that area open and get my cadmium yellow and I'm pretty much gonna use the cadmium yellow with this fan brush and I'm just gonna set my brush down and flip it up you can also kind of push it you can like tap through and then push through there's different ways of doing grasses but mainly you want to start kind of at your <clears throat> back area I'm gonna actually turn it on its end so I can get a little bit more randomness here instead of getting a line start at the back and work your way forward so I already did my kind of mid-tone color my undertones have that dark color as my base so that was our kind of first layer and then this is our mid-tone and I'm not really liking this so I'm gonna get a little bit of my darker color here I think my brush is too it's just my paint's not wet enough it's clumping up too much get a little bit of my There we go. This brush is very thin, so you've got to have your paint kind of thin, otherwise it just can't push it around. All right, so a little bit darker. Got like an area of light and a little bit darker underneath and then an area of light and a little bit darker underneath. That'll give it kind of layers of growth. I need my yellow, more yellow. <laughs> like, look at it. It's just sticking on there. Come off. It's like, no. There we go. Don't use me. Mommy. <laughs> there we go. squeaks <laughs> my new chair you, have you inherited it yeah. just realized it's making a noise I lean up against it just right sometimes my bones squeak so I don't know it might be my bones who knows so this week you're working wrapping up your uh, patreon challenge image I am on Thursday? Yes, I was sick this week, so I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I got sick just before. I was like, seriously. I have stomach issues that flare up, and you just never know when it's going to happen. It's <laughs> like, it always happens at the very worst time. <laughs> Seems like not, not convenient. <laughs> Although there's never convenient time to be sick, I guess. Mm. <laughs> But anyways, sorry. So yeah. over on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, you nice. can get traceables and <laughs> bonus content and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And at the time of this video, it's getting towards the end of August and they bill on the calendar month. So sometimes we recommend that if you wait to the first of the month, then you get the whole month. Right. I don't, I can't control it. Uh, right. Somebody asking me to change their billing to the, you know, because they signed up late. And I'm like, I can't, I don't do the billing. I have no control over right. any of it's that. Right, it's a so. third party that we have no yeah. ownership in or I anything like that. Yeah. So I don't do the billing. I don't 
handle anybody's accounts. So if you sign up, you're you're responsible for canceling and all that good stuff. You know, I don't. Right. I can't help I help with any of that. Sorry. I get emails all the time asking people asking me to edit their accounts. I'm like. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't, you were definitely wouldn't want anybody to have access, you know, just any me. I, I guess I'm, I'm flattered that they trust me with that kind of thing, but you don't, you definitely wouldn't want just anybody having access to your account. It's not that kind of a thing. It's right. you're completely in control of what you spend and when, and I have nothing to do with it except for to see what you've paid me and to allow access to the perks and things that come along with being a patron so we have all kinds of fun stuff we'll be doing bingo later on this month with our patrons i still haven't set a date but i think it's going to be or actually it's going to be september oh, september say. yeah not this month but we're still in august oh what month is it <laughs> <laughs> all right so just kind of covering up the bottoms of these leaves it's really important to do this otherwise you'll just kind of have these leaves that look like they're not attached to anything um, so I'm going to go through here and kind of break up this glob of green that's right there. And you can do this as many times as you need to until you kind of get it to where you like it. So it may not, you know, it may not go on the first time just so. You might need to do it a couple of times. This brush is, I'm having a little bit of difficulty kind of getting it just the way I like it. So I might might just switch to a my liner brush and then I can do these individual you know just on a few of them just these little individual grasses yeah and then I'm going to use this for my fern too so grass will grow in the, like these little clumps that sort of spread out from a central almost like a spoke so they kind of do this like this so they'll grow out of the clump and then this they spread from that clump so when you see a group of grasses a lot of times these clumps are kind of all going in different directions towards the sun you know in general generally the same direction but they'll be crisscrossing and doing like this you know so just you know you're never going to see them just all lined up perfectly in a row, you know, in the same direction. So every now and then just cross one over and break it up. Much better. I'm getting the impression you kind of know what you're doing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Good. It's a good thing. Fooled. Since you have an art channel. <laughs> and soon a second channel is about cooking, huh? No. Yeah? No. I no. I like it occasionally. As you've told the boys, you can cook. I can cook. I don't love cooking. You don't love cooking. Right. Mark likes cooking. Mark likes cooking, but can't cook. <laughs> You can cook. You can cook well. You cook really good. What are you talking about? Not true. You've gotten better at cooking. You didn't used to be able to cook very well. Neither one of us could. When we first got married, we were both completely new. <laughs> no <laughs> idea how to cook. I know we've told the story before, but my favorite cooking story is that we were married a couple of years Maybe I, I forget where I, I want to say we were in Phoenix, but Probably. I just remember she was making Kraft macaroni and cheese, I was. and she was measuring out the water exactly. Right, it said boil, six cups of water to boil the macaroni, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" She goes, "It's six cups." It says to boil six cups of water. I'm like, just fill it with water and boil it. It strained off. No, it's six. No, cups. that's what it said though. <laughs> you had to do it that way. Obviously, said that for a reason. So don't. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> and measuring it like the recipe said. <laughs> and it came out bright, great, for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it oh wasn't gosh. dry at all. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Come a long way. 
<laughs> and now it's like, oh, maybe a little about this much of that spice. And Today I this. tried that. Um, I didn't. I added the pasta cold. Remember? Oh we yeah, were, yeah. I, today I put the pasta cold in the in with the water before it was heated, mm-hmm. and it came out great. Did you use just a little bit of water? Yeah, just use a little bit of water. Yeah. Just enough. It heated up much faster. That's that's like so much faster. It's like why have we not been doing this? I know that's something that we've never. I just learned that that was a thing. <laughs> we learned it on YouTube. We did. I thought I thought you had to mm-hmm. heat up your water first and then put in your pasta. But apparently the modern pastas don't need you to do that, and it's true because I just tested it tonight and it worked. Don't don't get mad at me though if it doesn't work on yours. It may <laughs> be a different brand than I use so. No, I think it's pretty well. (laughs) All right, so making up a little bit more of that yellow oxide, Indian yellow hue with the burnt orange, that kind of uh, orangey green for this area here. Just a little bit brighter. I need a little bit. Let's get a little bit of white with it. Just need a little bit. Or we can use this yellow that we got here. Just need a little bit of bright. There we go. some of that reddish color from the burnt orange. See some of that in here under the grasses. So I'm seeing this fern kind of starts out dark. So I'm going to start it with the dark color. And I'm going to put I'm going to put three big leaves here. There's only two in our picture, but I'm going to make a third just to make it more, yeah. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to pull down and just kind of go a side to side across Towards this stem, this I need to go slow because I'm going too fast. My color got wet right there. Okay, there we go. So that's nice. That's that's this highlight color that I was just using. So, in fact, I think I'm going to go this way. I think it's better instead of coming in. I'm going to start at the stem and go out. I think that will give me the spiky look of the fern better. Okay, so start there. You can just go along one side and then do the other side if you want to instead of going back and forth. And they get wider as they go down towards the bottom. These ones I'm kind of curving a little bit. Is that your number one liner still? Yes. Number one liner. Okay. I think I'm going to do a couple more. I like this. She's going crazy. Yeah, I think. I just think it, it adds it some does. to this. Yep foreground here just uh, I'm gonna do five and overlap these two so that they're kind of not all separated out perfectly okay there we go and I've put I've put it kind of behind that rock there but you can put it in front of the rock if you want um, However you want to do it, actually. I think I'm I think I'm just gonna keep on going with it here. Well no. We'll leave it. I don't wanna overdo it. I can overdo it. I'm gonna put it in front of that rock though. Right there. Just add a few like random leaves to it there at the bottom. Get the black and kinda add some of the black through. 
where the stems would be coming out. There we go. Look how beautiful. I'm going to get this really bright yellow and I'm going to add it to this tip. So these ones, just this one right here. Now look at it and see your reference. So I'm seeing some more like reddish tones in, in this area over here. So I'm going to do that really quick. Get a little bit of that burnt orange and my yellow. Let's get this color here. There we go. Use that. A little bit of reddish in my mosses over here. Maybe even a little bit darker. I'll dab that off a little bit. Maybe get a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber. So it's a little bit more natural color because that was a little bit bright. dark in there because I kind of covered all my dark. So I'm go back in with my dark. And then right in there there's that little bit of highlighted yellow. And I've got that green on my brush still so it's going to kind of Introduce that in there too with this. Okay. I can do a little bit of it down here. These are very subtle things. I'm just kind of playing with the values of some of the stuff that I'm seeing here. So like this rock here has got some color. I already I basically covered up the whole thing. So I don't know if I can get it in there. I put grasses all the way up to this rock here instead of that. Showing this rock coming down. Yeah, no, that's not working. Sorry. I'm gonna have to. I think all of that is wet enough that I can just wipe it off. Yeah. Okay, we'll just leave it. Put that dark back in there, though, right in here. That is black right up against that rock right there. So I'm going to get the black. And right here, just really go dark. Right up against that. Okay. Get a little bit of the blue. My light color. I'm just gonna put 
push this back and highlight it with a little bit of blue right here. Again. very small changes to this and then I've got like a dark area in here that I'm just going to glaze let's go over it with the dark color tint it a little bit darker in a couple of places And you can go back in and add your highlighted grasses over the top of this if you need to, but I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, that gave it a little bit more modeled look. Same thing down here, a little bit of glaze just in this area where it's going over into the corner into the shade, shadow area. And then if this is dry, I can do it at the bottom of this plant too, just right here where it's kind of going off down into the shadows. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna end there. Um, I'm gonna do one more little thing right here. I'm gonna get this lighter highlight color. I'm gonna just put in just a little bit of a bush right there. And a little bit more highlight right in here. Okay. There we go. I like it. That was really fun to paint. I hope you guys try it. It's really, really fun when you have a beautiful image like this. Just try to kind of figure out how to do it, you know? So a lot going on in there, but working back to front, I think was key. I'm gonna tone that down where it is, but I'm gonna sign it first. And then I'm gonna add just one more little glaze over that area using this light green. Get a super chat. Yes, we got a super chat. Let me turn off the thing there. All right. And it is from, hold please, from Deborah. No specific message from Deborah, but thank you so much, Deborah. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Deborah. I think she I uh, she donated to the spam fund, so I think. You know, what do you mean spam fund? Oh, we had a, a little side discussion, believe it or not, and chat about food. <laughs> and then you know somebody suggested that we do a live tutorial in Hawaii. Oh, so nice! Go, yeah, and then you know we can have spam because it's a pretty big thing there in Hawaii, and then it just mm. went from there. So it was right about the time that you know that she donated. So I think she wants to buy spam. Or maybe not. Nice. We got some spam from one of our viewers from Hawaii. Yes. Last year. Some chorizo or Earlier spam. this year. I can't remember. Yeah. I think it was earlier this year. But anyways, back to the painting. All right. Whew. That brush was not great for signing. It's too long. <laughs> it's made it really hard. So use a smaller brush, shorter brush. But I didn't want to dirty up another one. So, okay. I'm going to glaze in some dark just below this bush here maybe get a little bit of the darker green just right here right up underneath it because it was just like too too much okay there we go done wow fun thanks again guys for watching with us tonight and thank you again to Lori Lohi for providing this photo it's amazing so hope you guys try it. I'm going to keep on fiddling with it here. I'm just seeing some little things. I'm going to add a few little touches of grasses and different things as we. So again, below the video is the description and all the materials, links to Amazon, the Brush Guys, Blick, social media, share your stuff on the Facebook group. Yeah. So we can see the stuff that you're painting from Angela. Mm. You, you can join our newsletter to get mm -hmm. information about upcoming videos and stay in touch. Um, and if you 
like our channel, you can click on the subscribe button and be sure to click the notification bell and it'll send you notification emails. Um, if you haven't checked recently, you may want to recheck that because um, recently some of my subscribers said that they had been unsubscribed from YouTube without their <laughs> knowledge. But so, then, yeah. yeah, they weren't getting the notification emails anymore. I got multiple people saying that that happened to them. So, I don't know. They must have done a reset of some sort and unsubscribed some people. So, if you want those notification emails, you might check that and see. Make sure it's checked on yours. All right. There we go. We're done. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.